I'm curious, you've touched briefly in other conversations about dispelling the myth that even as an experienced coach that there's always a, f- a full confidence in what you're doing and, um, and the, the, the fears and anxieties that kind of approach us or the doubts that, you know, that we deal with as coaches you know, and our decisions as we move through the season. And yet, I really, you don't hear a lot of experienced coaches talk about that process. And so I'm wondering if I can kind of encourage you to open up a little bit about sure. that for you because I think it would help immensely with those young coaches who feel that uh, I would imagine as much, probably more than, than a lot of us as experienced coaches. And even take through some specific situations, you know, maybe a case study, if you, oh, if I can you would, of, of yeah. you know, a situation where you felt that and kind of how you approach those challenges and, and, and what result from that situation and experience. Yeah, I, my, my guess is that most coaches don't like to discuss that topic is for fear of appearing weak right. or indecisive or soft. Uh, that being said, the reality of, of anybody in a leadership position at critical times feels that. They feel uncertainties, they feel they have questions about the protocol that was, you know, I'm sure it happens in commerce all the time. You know, uh, you, you question whether the decisions you've made have been the ones that are going to bring about the, the, the desired result, and that's you know that's part of that's part of life. You have to deal with those things, and of course, it goes back to mythology, uh, the siren songs. Yeah. You know what I'm referencing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was what well, that probably was chanted in a spoken what thousands three four thousand years ago that's part of the human condition period uh, it's certainly not limited to coaches uh, and one has to learn to deal with those siren songs and uh, the athletes as well uh, coming up to any major event uh, there'll be times where they'll feel, well, the back hurts a little better, that this, this is not quite right. Or, gee, I wonder if we've done enough of this or if we've done enough of that kind of thing. Uh, so that's, that's a reality of somebody who's uh, functioning out in the world. Uh, and what you have to do to a large extent is you have to expect these doubts to come in and then you have to let them come in and pass through and know that what they are mostly is a product of anxiety around, in our case, a competition. There's a, there's a scene that, that, and listen to you remind me uh, from Star Trek, The Next Generation, where, I don't know if you're familiar with the show, but Jean-Luc Picard and Beverly Crusher on the planet, and right. They're lost, and and the captain says, "All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna go this way," you know. And and uh, the doctor stops for a moment and says, hey, "You don't actually know that we're supposed to go that way, do you?" And the captain just says, "Well, no, but you know, sometimes I've just got to make that decision." Right. Know? You know? Right. And, and right. I just right. think that that's a, a valuable right. leadership experience. Is yeah. you know the, the the role of that. That, that person in that lead position is to is to do everything they can to make the most informed decision that they're capable of mm-hmm. and then make the decision. Yeah, exactly. And, right. and then tying that too into you know the relationship you have with your athletes and and finding the balance between between taking that leadership role and the responsibility for the decisions and also you know having the honest relationship with them so that you find that balance between Letting them know that it's a process and you're making a decision uh, versus always having the right answer and going off you know, in that in that direction, and I think that that's that's sometimes a delicate balance for those coaches. And I've, I've seen certainly in my own career places where I was not communicative enough in terms of my decision, the same we're going to go this way, and at times where I was too communicative in terms of those vulnerabilities, where really those people that were leading needed 
kind of that decision making or that firm hand without having you know, exposure to the downs. Right. You know, that's right. a hard, hard to balance to make, I think. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I think this, that uh, two things come to mind. One is, let's talk about decisions in related related to athletes and how they're selected or what boat they're in or what seat they're in, that kind of thing. When the coach makes that decision and he communicates that with the athlete, talks to the athlete about it, you don't, this is a little variation of thing, you don't ask the athlete to necessarily agree with that decision that George is the better guy for this seat at this particular point in time, but you ask them to align that they need to align whether they agree or not uh, in order for them, in order to move forward. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the, 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 the questions or the anxiousness we have around race time. Uh, I've said this a few minutes ago. People have to know that that's to be expected. It has nothing to do with reality. The reality of, of the training or your physiology it has all to do with the mind activity coming into a, a, to an obligatory act. Uh, then we just go on from there. Uh, we move on from there, we don't buy it. And I think that's the difference very often. That can be the difference between uh, crews and individuals who can move through it if they understand that. And then two, if, it's, if they haven't understood it by your communication, if they're seasoned, most seasoned athletes know that. Right. They know that this is, what, you know, this is what's gonna happen. Yeah. I know that you know, two weeks before the, you know, the finals of such and such, you know, this is gonna be the mindset. Just let it go in, let it go out and we go forward, essentially just concentrating on the specific tasks. This is all fundamental psychology. You know, concentrate on the tasks at hand, and then concentrate, if, if the message is delivered with frequency and absorbed, that races are not one on race day. You know, if you want to feel good, backing into the starting blocks. It's this next stroke. Yeah. It's this practice. Because essentially what you're doing in practice is you're sharpening the skills in your mind for that obligatory moment in time. Right. You're doing all this for that. And of course you're enjoying the process too. Right. I mean it's challenging day by day. but. If, if, that, if that's clear and people are not looking for some you know, heroic act on race day, I want you to row the race of your lives. You know, right. you know, I want you to train. You know, that will almost guarantee failure. On race day, you know, it's just another day at the office. In reality. You're not doing something new. You're not doing something you're not trained for. You're trained for this. All you need to do is get out of the way and let it, and let it happen. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, it's all tied together.